the last G8 meeting of the major developed economies, oh, and Russia, revealed a significant geopolitical problem. It is what might be termed eco-imperialism, where the developed world attempts to impose its environmental priorities on the developing world. The developed economies declared that for the sake of the planet, they were going to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions, but only if the developing nations reduced theirs too. If you accept the logic of reducing greenhouse gas emissions, they have a point. China is the leading emitter of the gases, with Indonesia and India also in the top four, alongside the United States. The trouble is that greenhouse gas emissions are closely linked to development. They come from the cost-effective generation of energy, and as such represent the fastest route to development, the quickest way to actually make poverty history. So they have a point too. If we want to end poverty quickly, greenhouse gas emissions are the price we have to pay. The developed world cannot stop this without engaging in ecological colonialism. The G5 group of major developing economies emphatically rejected the G8's position. If we want to move forward on global warming, we need to find a solution that delivers development to the poor, continued growth to the rich, and mitigates the potential harmful effects of global warming. Greenhouse gas emission reductions satisfy only one of these criteria. We need to think again, and think again quickly. Otherwise, we will have learned nothing from history. Ian Murray with the Competitive Enterprise Institute.